I know I said the end, but this is an epilogue to The Dancer's Craft, 2010. June. The air was soft and heavy and smelled of earth and rain. The dancer raced the clouds to weed again at Quincy Lane. He takes his gothic hoe in hand, whose blade is like a beak. Like any other dancer, he's dependent on technique. He twirls his hoe, he slices, he hooks weeds out by the roots. The grass and vetch go flying, untouched the sunflower shoots. He must be in New York by eight. He churns like a machine, fast forwarding along the rows in a sweat laced with caffeine. Then suddenly the sky goes dark and a single tongue of breeze licks up the undersides of leaves and whitens all the trees. The dancer hears approaching a sound like a speeding train until he's hit full bodily by a bursting wall of rain. The boiling sky is ripped open by a jagged flashing blade. The thunderclap which follows explodes like a grenade. His body sheathed in water, he buries his steel in the sod. It's handled tight in his wet hands. He's a human lightning rod. He holds his ground. In a fury, he hacks at the weeds in the rows. He roars at the storm like Lear and Tom. If he goes in a flash, he goes. The worst of the front passes over. The rain becomes gentle, and then, as he finishes weeding, the sun comes out, and he gets in his car again. October. At the house, one more producer comes to call. Fabrizio, and the money is in London, and a plan will make it flow. But that was back in April, and the project is on hold, and now it's almost Halloween, and the pumpkin's getting cold. I was there when a man named Gatewood in a silver limousine rolled into what seemed a movie with him in the opening scene. He sat with us, and we all discussed the film we wanted to make, and each subsequent producer has arrived for another take. The concept was, what was it? The man, the house, the dancer, his way of life, his gardens, his looking for the answer in sunlight and in water, in memory, in romance, in flower buds, in fire, and now and again in dance. We called it 60 Mixtures, an invited expose in 60 scenes behind the scenes to be shot in a year or a day, in theaters and on location in the town where time stands still, it was half improvisation in the beehive of Bell Hill. In the house, like the house of Usher, it was somewhat in need of repair, and it rose out of the hilltop like a castle in the air. Nothing has changed, fundamentally, in all of the years since those times. The dancer is still telling his story like the mariner, and it still rhymes. Traveling into the landscape of his infinite backyard, he's gone so far into the garden, he's come out as the avant-garde to a minimum security prison where he's chained to himself alone, to the grounds of the sanatorium where he's found himself a home. There you will find him sitting in a dome of leaves or vines. In these natural confessionals, he'll be waiting to speak his lines, where the catbird that mews and whistles is still a summer guest, though with tape teased from a memorex no longer lines its nest where the catbird that sings in the bushes knows its own lines now by heart and will help to prompt the dancer, since it's also learned his part. But wait, a cameraman appears from Brazil as the harvest comes in, since in Rio a month-long Momix run of Botanica is soon to begin. In the studio in the forest, in the tower, the pantry, the hall, the visitor asks if he's dreaming as the wallpaper drops from the wall. Then he's off with some curious footage, which a million Brazilians will see, and marvel what tribe and what shaman create dance in the land of the free. The dancer, well shot, retires to his Adirondack chair in the circle that's raked like a stage. He lights a match. Smoke rises and curls into the crystal autumn air, in the shape of a poem on a page.